Well, hey, folks, how y'all doing? Welcome back, an old man in the land of grills. <laughs> We're going to do, yeah, it's it's getting tight. There's a lot here. They're, they're three, four deep now in the land of grills. But we're going to do, you read the description. Yeah, we're going to do our burn-in on the Char Griller Gravity Series 980. We're also going to do a biscuit test today to see how even it cooks. And, you know, a lot of people, I, I actually have made the video for putting this thing together. But uh, everybody, everybody just wants to know, how does it work? How does it work? How does it work? So I am going to be posting that later. But yeah, I thought I'd do the burn-in video today. You know, we, we've got to be, everybody wants, you know, they want the comparison with the Master Built. And to be fair to Master Built and Char Griller, got to put this to its paces first. We all know how that works. I've done a lot of videos on that. And uh, it's, you know, in order to do a fair comparison, folks, we got to get to put this to its paces first. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start doing that. We're going to do a burning. We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to show you how to load that up, how you start the fire. The functionality of it we're going to see how it holds temp we're probably going to do the burn in at about 425 for an hour and then we're going to throttle it down and um, see how it does with that um we check see how it smokes we're gonna put the biscuits on see how evenly they cook throughout the grill and uh hopefully that'll be informational for all of you and you know for me because uh, i'm just doing it for the first time too so i tell you what let's go over to owner's manual and take a look at how this thing you know how we should be doing this so once you get done assembling as it says fully assembled you start going in here it's got some safety stuff it talks about the switches it talks a little bit more about how it works it uh actually talks a little bit more about how that controller works now i, I wasn't aware there is a turbo turbo fan setting and uh, i'm not really not sure what you use that for it, it even says here turbo fan press turbo fan button for increased fan performance so i don't know if you press that say if you're doing um low and slow you want to go to hot and fast real quick you would turn that on to get it up to 700 degrees real quick uh and there's also what's strange here is i went through this looking for something that would talk about a burning and there's uh it talks about lighting it and everything. We're going to go through that. And, but there's nothing that talks anything about how to do a burn-in on this. Uh, so, and, and it is important to do that because if there's any oils or grease from manufacturing in, in, the, um, in, in, in the installation uh, video, which I haven't posted yet, uh, I, I talked about taking a vacuum cleaner in there and getting all those little beads from the styrofoam out of there so you don't have that, that smell in there. Uh, and, and we are going to coat the inside. Uh, I'm going to just spray some cooking oil on all those metal surfaces on the inside. Just uh, season them up a little bit. But uh, there is nothing here. Now, uh, some people have been talking about where to add the wood if you're going to put additional wood chunks in. And some people said you, you really shouldn't put it in a hopper. But it, it talks about mix wood chunks in hopper with charcoal. Never use more than a pound and a half wood chunks to it. The hopper, a small amount of wood can go a long way. So is that their way of warning us? I don't know. Too much wood can result in excessive smoke and unwanted flavor. So you, you can, and it gives you instructions how to add charcoal to the hopper, turning grill off, and adding wood smoke. You can also put wood in the, uh, in the ash box too. And that's, that's very similar to how the master bill works. So I tell you what, let's just... Uh, I'm going to take it apart, spray the inside, you don't need to see that, and then uh, put it back together. And then, uh, then I'm going to show you how we're going to put charcoal in and where you light it, uh, the setup procedure for getting it started. We're going to start it, and then we're going to let it run. Keep on watching. All right, like I said, I just took some cooking oil, sprayed it on there, and then just took a paper towel and just wiped it around a thin, even coat. And yeah, this is not mandatory, and there's nothing in the structure manuals to do it, but that's metal, untreated, and I just want to season it. With the heat and that, it'll make it uh, easier to keep clean over the long run. While we're talking here, I think I mentioned that the cooking grates are uh, steel porcelain coated. They're actually cast iron uh, porcelain coated enamel. So correction there. Thank you, whoever did whoever said that to me. But you you are absolutely correct. Uh, so let's get it back together. All right, let's talk charcoal for a second. If you watch my channel, you know that I love to use B and B. Uh, it is just it burns hotter, longer, cleaner competition oak that stuff uh, if you can find it, it's awesome but for the burning i've got a bag of royal oak not, not wrong with it you can use kingsford blue bag too and it, it, it'll work it's just that over time you'll notice that something like that's going to be a little bit more efficient i uh, remember this holds about 16 pounds and uh you can see i got a bag back there of the bnb lump also and it's about nine pounds ten pounds of lump if you want to put it in there uh, we're going to experiment with both but just for today i'm not going to put any wood chunks in i'm just going to stick with uh, some royal oak. So let's uh, take a look here in the hopper. 
So I just filled it up about three quarters full, you know, and then let's talk about fire starters. All right, so there's a lot of options when it comes to fire starters. I got this about a year ago. There's 144 little squares in there, and this is what they look like, and you just kind of break them apart like that, and then you can break them, break them again like, like that. And these fit real nice and they work nice, but you can use whatever you want. You can use, uh, uh, some people will just take a piece of paper towel and roll it up and dip it in some cooking oil and start that. But uh, these work for me, I believe, like that was a year ago, I believe I got these off of Amazon and they are food safe and they work very well. All right, so where does it go? It goes right there. You just put it in there and then you light it. You can use a match. I like to use a torch. Just gets it going faster. So uh, let's talk about what we gotta do in order to so light it. Before you light it, open up that top, leave it open. You got the bottom open. We pull the slider and we have to open up our vent here for the fan. So now we're, we're ready to plug it in and we're ready to give, give it some fire. All right, one thing I forgot the vent is uh, mention has opened up the back vent. So. See, I'm forgetting stuff already. So, got her, got her all ready to go. Got my torch in there. Got the fan in there. That's open. That's open. That's open. Back vent, you can see, is open. I don't know if you need to have the uh, lid open. Uh, temperatures today, it's it's only 40 degrees and it's a little windy. So, we'll see how that affects. Now, they say once you get it lit, to let it go for about three to five minutes before you start closing doors and turning that on and setting your temp. So, let's get it lit and then uh, give it a look-see. All right, you can see she's lit. And we got smoke coming out, so we know the chimney effect is working, which it should, because it's vertical. And we'll, like I said, we'll let this go three, five minutes, close everything down, get that plugged in, and uh, fire it up. All right, coming up on four minutes here, and uh, I'm ready to start shutting things down, and we'll show you how we fire it up. All right, let's fire it up. We're gonna turn it on. See our actual temperature is 39 degrees. Holy smokes. Set temp. Fan is on already. And we are going to adjust this and take it up to uh, 425. And that's what we're going to do our burn in at. Come on. Oh, hey, oh, oh, we're getting close. Jeepers, creepers. Press the button for set. That's it. Give you a look see as, uh, as she heats up. All right, three three minutes, and we're, we're already at three, almost three, almost three fifty by the time time I'm done talking here. All right, I know I said five minutes, but then I we thought it because if you remember the temps out here today are only low forties. We've got a lot of mass here. Remember this cooking chamber is three feet long, and uh, it, it, there's a lot of metal in there. There's cast iron in there. It takes a while for that to come up to temp. So you know we're just giving it a chance to get up to temp, and we have been. Uh, within five degrees of set point. Uh, I've been watching that. Uh, I, and, and I've taken some temps on the uh, cover here. It is, it's, it's warm. You know, obviously that gets warm over here because that's where the fire is, but it's still, I, I mean, I just wouldn't do that a lot on the back, that vent, but they close it to half. Now that you don't want to touch because that is not double insulated. So that's going to get hot. So let's, uh, so take, let's take a look at those pucks now and see how they're doing on the inside. I mean, this isn't a real true test. I mean, that's at great level. And you remember the temp probe is just above there. So the temp probe sits here, the great level is down there. Just take a quick look. Set at 425. 425 there, about 25 degrees warmer there, about 450 there, interesting. So that's pretty consistent. Keep on going here. We're gonna give this probably about another half an hour to 45 minutes, and then we're gonna throttle down and uh, do the biscuit test. All right, folks, uh, actually two and a half hours. Uh, it's a, even a little over two and a half hours. I had a bunch of little projects today. You know how little projects always turn into bigger projects and that's exactly what happened. So two and a half hours, I, I, I poked my head out here a couple times and just looked and said, well, wait, 425, that's what it's supposed to do. So uh, take a walk around here. I did walk around once already and I noticed that uh, this leak right here has kind of stopped. So, and this one here is still kind of there a little bit, but I'm gonna give it some time, give this gasket a chance to, uh, to settle in. 
and find its own place. And I have a feeling those are going to go away. Uh, vent, uh, I did close it down to half just to see what would happen. And uh, I mean, it's 425. Let's take a look at the pucks still in there. 425 there. And uh, 475 there. So definitely hotter near the fire source, which is somewhat expected. And you can see we've got a nice little brown from our oil there. So we know that that is uh, seasoned nicely. So we are gonna turn this down to 375. That's what our biscuits say. And uh, you can see we had that open for a while and the temperature went down. And I don't know if you can hear, the fan just kicked on. This obviously is a PID controller and it's caught itself now and uh, it's gonna take itself back up to 425. But uh, we're gonna set it down to 375. I set it at 475 and press the temp. You see it's blinking and we use the wheel here and we just take it down to 475 and then we push it and that's it. See how long it takes to get down there. Then we're gonna put our biscuits on and do a biscuit test. All right, time for the biscuit test, folks. Uh, 375, took about 20 minutes to come down. Uh, and uh, you're saying, what's on your biscuits, Tom? Well, I like to spice my biscuits up. I got some of this burnt, have you checked out Burn Pit Barbecue yet? Uh, veteran owned uh, business folks, www.burnpitbarbecue.com. This is their fire in a hole. This is uh, oh, the good stuff. And let's just uh, put them on there, kind of spread them out. I took the top shelf off. And I'm just going to do this kind of eyeball on it from one side to the other. And we'll see how these do. Give you a look-see. All right, these are Pillsbury Grands, and it says 11 to 15 minutes. We are coming up on six minutes. Okay. They're looking, looking all about the same. So keep her, uh, give you a look and maybe another, when we get to 10 minutes. All right, uh, 10 minutes, let's uh, take a look. Yeah, they look like, they look like biscuits. Let's, uh, okay, and let's go closest to the firebox. Okay. Ah. On a, on a little warmer spot right there. But then that, pretty good. Pretty good. These are actually done. All right, so, except for, oh, these are hot. Except for this corner back here, right there, everything else was pretty consistent. Uh, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try one of these. Uh, I'm hungry. Uh, but, uh, folks, I, 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 ho I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, really showed you what the, uh, here, let's put this down so you can see it, what this thing can do. We did the burn-in, did the biscuit test. It cooks pretty evenly. We, we showed that maybe it's a little bit more consistent in there. But, you know, this is just the first time with it. So got to give it some time. We got to do some real cooks on it, see how it performs. Uh, but so far, it uh, ran for three hours and uh, held temperature very consistently. So hope this was helpful, folks. Uh, ask questions, uh, thumbs up, leave a comment, and as always, folks, uh, appreciate you watching. Thank you.